if you would have asked me a couple of months ago, is it possible for an anime convention to be ran in a casino? I would have looked pretty perplexed. It's a thing that I've never heard of. Maybe there are conventions out there that utilize a casino, but I have yet to experience that. And I have to be honest with you. Like when I first heard of this, I was very puzzled. I was very leery about this. I was like, I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Why would they even consider this as an option? Like, you know, you're mixing, in the case of this convention anyways, you're mixing young people and families. Not to imply that this is purely, you know, a family-friendly convention per se. But it definitely attracts families just for the simple fact that it is affordable. So when you think of families and young people being mixed in with uh, gamblers, it's just... It's a weird vibe. Like, how is this going to work? How are the senior citizens going to react to cosplayers? I don't know. But I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. If you're new to the channel, I'm Ryofu. Pretty much this channel is all about gaming and anime news. We also do reviews on both. And every now and then, I do videos such as this. We go to an anime convention. We check it out. I go to panels. I check out events. And then I report it back to you, the viewer. So if any of that sounds remotely intriguing, please consider subscribing. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into my review of Anime Oklahoma 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I am Ryofu, and you are watching The Gaming Harbinger. So this is Anime Oklahoma's fourth year as a convention, and I have to say, uh, definitely an odd choice to have a convention, but uh, I'm glad that they're back. So when you walk into the main entrance, and I do believe this is the main entrance, there are multiple entrances, but I believe this was the main one. As soon as you walk in, there's a table laid out where you can register or um, you can check out what events are going on at the convention. Now, I do have to keep it real with you guys. So I knew ahead of time that the schedule was not going to be released until the day of the convention. Um, I actually messaged uh, the convention. I want to say it was sometime in the week of the convention. And I just said, hey, is there any time we're going to get the schedule or are we going get to get it before? And pretty much they told me due to some issues they had that it's not going to happen. So we didn't get it on an app or anything like that or no printouts. Pretty much what we got was a sheet of white paper typed out where uh, it had like, here's Friday, here's Saturday, here's Sunday. And here's the things that we're going to have. And you could take a picture of it on your phone. I mean, I guess that's using what you have. But, uh, you know, a little disappointing there. But I mean, it's all good. As I've stated multiple times now, this convention has a pretty good deal. Like if you reserve a room and I believe for one day or one night, I should say one night, you're going to get one badge. And if you get and this is a weekend badge to be specific. So if you reserve a hotel for two nights, I believe they have a deal where you can get I think it's three. You get three badges. So, I mean, that's you and also inviting uh, two other people, two homies or whatever pretty good deal I always that's always like how I roll with this it's usually typically pretty affordable in comparison to other conventions I go to so it's not a big deal to me it's a win-win now once you do your pre-registration thing like immediately to the right of you is the room that would have the dealers room now I do have to say like once you walk in you'll see that for the size of the convention, I think they did a really good job. The layout reminded me of uh, those uh, small mini cons where you have people selling stuff for you, but then you go further back into the room. This is where you go to get an autograph. This is where you go talk to a voice actor or whatever. This is where you go buy stuff from them. And to be honest with you, I really appreciate this layout. For some people, this might be the main reason they go. They go for the dealer's room and then they go to get autographs, to get prints and get them signed, or they might want to get a picture with a voice actor. 
So I appreciate this layout. It really handles like two things at once. Unexpectedly, when I was uh, uh, checking out the dealer's room pretty early on, I bumped into this cosplayer and she was like, yeah, I see what you're doing. You know, keep up the good work and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, all I could really say was, hey, we, we out here. We out here. We ready. So I do want to throw this out there really quickly. I didn't get as much footage as I could have. And there's a reason for that. This is in a casino. I don't know what their rules are. And then I'm trying to be self-aware and understand that there's people that are here to gamble and they're not here to be on YouTube. Let's let's keep it real. Right. So I try to be respectful and mindful of that. So there was like the way it was set up was, like I said, the registration, you had that table to the right of you, you had the dealer's room. And then you walk in a little further, there's a few areas, you know, games where you could gamble. But then you, when you walk actually into the main part of the casino, you actually had to walk to that center part just to make it to the, it's, it's the gaming rooms and there's a video game room and a tabletop gaming room. And uh, both were very spacious very 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 nice looking rooms um probably more for like office meetings and stuff like that but i mean no complaints really good the only disadvantage of course is like if you're underage or whatever you would have to walk into the casino and go to these you know in order to get to these rooms so but i mean and that's another thing too shout out to all the staff they were very polite very chill I wasn't sure what to expect, so that's another reason why I didn't record as much, you know, kind of like, I guess you would say more like a vlogging style, because I didn't know how they would react, but they really just let me do my thing, and it wasn't really a big deal. Cosplay 101 was actually the first panel that I attended. I thought I figured it'd be interesting and just to check out, and keep in mind also, for the size of this convention, there isn't as many events going on, so I was like, hey, let's, let's just check this out. And uh, this is supposed to be for beginners or if it's your first time cosplaying. And pretty solid advice. Another thing that I like to suggest is reach out to local conventions to shadow guests. Or maybe talk to a local cosplayer that you know who guests and see if you can shadow them. Um, go to the con with them, help them with their table, learn what they do, how they do it. Um, maybe sit in on the prejudging and the cosplay contest, kind of learn how those decisions are made. Um, that's something that I did whenever I first started out guesting, um, and it has helped me tremendously um, being able to learn those things. Um, and then once again, start local. If you want to start guesting, look at local mini conventions. It's the easiest way to get your foot in the door and continue your way up. Overall, I had a good time at this. Uh, I was just curious to hear what was said, what kind of information was stated. And she had her stuff together. She was very knowledgeable and uh, just all around, you know, just interesting stuff to take in. However, I do have to point this out because it was kind of funny and weird. Um, there was a moment where she made a comment about traveling and that she truly loves traveling. But what was interesting is that she was like, well, if I'm on vacation or I have vacation time, I wouldn't do I wouldn't use my vacation time for an anime convention. I wouldn't. That's not a vacation to me. I would go somewhere and not that's not a vacation to me is going to an anime convention. And I'm just like, woo, I'm feeling the heat right now. You know what I mean? Cause I'm going to keep it a buck with you guys. Like, so pretty much, I mean, me going to these conventions. Yeah. It's, it's not happening because uh, now recently, you know, my job title has changed and now I have weekends off, but for years, 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 most of my life, I have not had weekends off. So yeah, I was using my vacation time to go to anime conventions. And I mean, it, it's whatever. It's not something I'm ashamed of. It's something I do because I think it's fun. Now I will say this, maybe the way she intended it, and, and that was my knee jerk reaction when she first said that, but maybe the way she intended it was, hey, like if I have a choice and you're telling me, do I wanna go somewhere nice and enjoy myself? Or do I wanna, you know, have four cosplays lined up. I'm dressing up as four different characters and then I'm doing panels and stuff. I totally get it. You, that's gonna feel more like work to you. It's something you love doing, but it's gonna feel 
jobish, totally understand it. Keep in mind, me going around with a gimbal and a camera, changing the lens occasionally, charging, switching batteries, all this stuff, like that's kind of taking away a little of my chill time with the convention, you know what I mean? Like, do I really wanna walk in a restaurant with this thing? Not really, not really. So then I have to take time to put it away. Do I wanna walk around and shop with these things? Not really, but it ends up happening sometimes. But you know, you work with what you got. And I mean, it's personally, it's my choice to make videos on stuff like this. It's my choice instead of um, me just uh, going to a convention and enjoying myself, I'm trying to showcase what kind of things are going on at a convention. That's my, whatever you want to call it. I'm, I don't want to say personal sacrifice. That's a little corny, but you get what I'm saying. And I'm not sure if maybe that was what she was trying to imply. Like, hey, I got to have all this stuff, you know, for all my cosplays. And then I got to get ready for panels. I have to have notes. I have to have all the bullet points and stuff. Totally get it. Peter Kalimis was the next panel I attended. And by the way, I hope I didn't destroy his name. But this gentleman was a joy to spend time with and hear his thoughts on being remembered for playing a character he did ages ago. How cool to imagine Adult Rolls is now and what he thinks he's doing and do you think he still has a strong accent or do you think that he's lived in the U.S. long enough that it's basically... No, I, I picture him like, you know, butcher shop in New York. <laughs> <laughs> still acts the same accent, blue hair, and you know, and it's almost like the soup Nazi, it's like, you know, <laughs> Get out of my scar! No meat for you! Do you think he's married and has kids or anything like that? Oh, sure. Yeah. Just Rolf Jr.'s. What do Rolf Jr. sound like? Time for bed! Were you part of the cave? <laughs> he even acknowledged that, you know, sometimes you can get a role that's not that big but then the character will branch off into games and spinoffs, and that gives you an opportunity to make more money and return to playing that character. The next panel I attended was DJ Sefi Hakubi. Now, I have seen this guy throughout the couple of years of Anime Oklahoma, but I have also seen him here and there during the years of Azumicon. Great times. Sefi has always been what I consider the go-to anime DJ for OKC conventions. I had no idea that he wasn't even from here. I just assumed he was. People that know me well are aware that I am a big rivet head, so I am not as knowledgeable in regards to his genre of music. He specializes in progressive EDM and hard dance. These are electronic genres that I am not familiar with, but you know what? That is why I'm here. I'm here to learn. So these two rooms, like there's a main event room, but then like before you get to the main event room, there's this opening where there's no doors that close or anything. And it's like a foyer, right? So this foyer is another area where they had events. Now, as far as I knew, or as far as what I experienced at the time I was there, this foyer area did not have like a mic or speaker set up. So you just got people together in this room and then the person would hopefully talk loud enough to where you could hear them. And also totally not his fault, like in, in Sefi's case, like, you know, people are walking behind him and then also, or behind us actually, because he was against the wall and we are uh, pretty much, our backs are turned towards people walking by. And then in the room across from us, you know, they have a really nice sound system, which, you know, as far as that, the sound system for that room was awesome. Probably better even than some of the big conventions I go to. Like that's how good the sound system was. 
it was so good crystal clear and sharp and yet also you know a big room but not too big so it felt intimate i guess you could say but anyways but if you're having an event in that little foyer area it's like yeah you know not the best sound quality not the best acoustics but how many minutes did that kill I need to be much slower with these answers. <laughs> All right, who is next on the victim train? Go ahead. Uh, what role means slower? Slower. <laughs> I can follow this one. <laughs> She's a pretty lady. <laughs> what role made me have an emotional moment? ReZero helped me practice saying goodbye to both of my parents. Uh, who here has not seen season two? All right, cover your ears and softly go la 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 for the next 30 seconds. This man you see on screen right now, this man killed it. He murdered it. Hands down, one of the funniest moments at the convention. Like, I, at least for me anyways. Had a hell of a time at his panel. Absolutely hilarious. Just lots of funny moments. And uh, it's just my luck. It's just my luck that the moment, and I recorded for a while, the moment I hit stop, right? As soon as I did, he just went ballistic. Like, he just started talking about how, hey, can you guys guess, like, what was the first anime I was, like, passionate about? And then, you know, obviously some people were like, yeah, Dragon Ball or whatever. Nope, nope. <laughs> Sailor Moon. I mean... Dude, and him, he just went all in. And he, he just went all in and he was just like, yep, and I really, I seriously, I wanted to be a Sailor Scout. He's like, it's not just, oh, yeah, they're cute. No, he's like, I wanted to be them. I wanted to be strong like them. It's just, he was so funny. Like, just, I, it was a blast. It was absolutely hilarious. It was a very good time. Um, I will say, though, there was still a segment in there I did record. And it was him taking a moment to express, like, his frustration, oddly enough. So we go from these extreme moments of just complete hilariousness, and then we go to, well, I do have a bone to pick. But also at the same time, I mean, his approach is really com coming from a place of like experience and just self-reflection. Man, like good panel, like just a damn good panel all around. like. I like when you can walk away from stuff like this and you're like, I can take something in from this as an adult, but just very reflective. I really appreciate that. I, I appreciate moments like this. This is why I like going to the voice actor panels because he, in that moment, he taught us a lot about what it's like to be a voice actor. I guess you could say the the negatives to it. You know what I mean? Because we taught definitely, we're aware of, you know, some of the perks, but he talked about the other side of the coin and that was really cool. Sure, you guys can probably name a dozen roles of yours that I've played that are favorites among the entire room, and I recognize that, and I'm so grateful for it. And then at the same time, you know, this is a very unstable profession, you know? I voiced Rivali. Great, amazing. That was six years ago. He is dead as a door now. He's not coming back. So that money, there's no more money coming in from that to pay the mortgage. I have to book new jobs. I have to land new work, and every job is... Imagine if every week, a show of hands, how many people have a regular job that they go into? Imagine if every week, every week, you had to re-interview to potentially be hired for your job again. Every week. Try every day. Because at this point, I'm auditioning every single day. She has been on the phone with me at times. When I have gone through 12 character auditions in 30 minutes, you know how many of them I booked? And I do that day in and day out. So it can get frustrating at times when I see like the new Pokemon is coming out, or Jujutsu Kaisen season two, or a bunch of projects that I know that I auditioned for, and I see a lot of the same colleague games over and over and over and over again. And it's hard not to get that internal feeling of what are they doing that I'm not, you know? Especially when you've grown up alongside these same colleagues, when they're the same age as you, you want to assume you're around the same level as them, but you're just not seeing yourself in the same projects that they are, it's very hard not to be like, I'm, I'm shit, I'm not good, I don't deserve to be in the industry. So to combat that and to actually answer your question, I try to find something in each of the roles that I do that I appreciate. 
appreciate it. There is a project that uh, I can't even talk about it yet. This is an indie project, it's not AAA. And I voice a hot blue wolf dad, all right? <laughs> like, all right, they're like, say, say no more, fam, say no more, I understand. My, my persona's a hot blue wolf, I, I totally understand. Um, but to me, it's so cool because like, even though he's not a playable character, in the story, he kind of acts as just this very heartwarming, he, he trains you and he looks after you and he comments on your progress. And I don't know if even half this room is going to know the project when it comes out, but getting to play that role, like getting to be like that father figure who like looks after the main character is so fun. Because I'm never having kids, screw that. <laughs> I get paid to pretend to have children? Future technology, I love that. And here we are, you're gonna hear me say it again. So after this, I went to go check out Amanda Miller and John Gramillion's Q&A, and I just really appreciate the sincerity and transparency that all the voice actors had at this convention. Amanda Miller shared some funny and awkward experiences she had with directors that were giving her weird directions for a character. John Gramillion gave his take on, does the original voice actor performance impact his performance? I found this kind of like a fascinating conversation. Sometimes I like to hear the Japanese actor, because even if they don't want me to do his voice, that actor was hired in Japan. He was the first person hired to do that job. And there's a reason for that, because they liked his voice, they liked his feel, they liked his energy, his whatever. And you're a different actor, but you want to try to get close to that, perhaps. The and the director will say, no, do it totally differently, or yeah, I want you to be like him. Or I hired you because I think you could be the English version of this dude, right, and deliver that voice. And Amanda even had her own amazing question for John Gramillion. So I was curious, so I got into this in like 2010, but you said you've been doing it since like, like, like 80. So you've seen, because I feel like there's a big boom in like the early 2000s. Like there weren't even cons as much back then. There's like a couple small ones. So what are the biggest changes you've seen in the industry, whether it's conventions or voiceover, between what you got started and now? What is interesting um, uh, is that I'm a theater guy, and I was doing theater all through the 2000s, up to like 2004 to 2008 or 9. I was doing theater every weekend, so I never got to go to cons. I never went to conventions in the 2000s. I started going to conventions in like 2016, 2017, after they were already really established, and it used to be a very different situation. But there's a lot of changes that I've seen. The biggest ones, not just that you get stuff on. I mean, you used to have to buy a VHS. You chose between the sub or the dub. The VHS cost a lot of money for that, for you know what it is now. And for one VHS tape, you can right now, for the price of that, you can go online and you can stream every month every single anime title you want to see that High Dive puts out or Crunchyroll puts out, etc. So the access to anime is just tremendously different and easier these days, of course, right? Because anime kind of started, ADV started like the birth of the internet, tiny little baby internet now to where, with, where they are now. And, and so the internet grew with it and anime grew with it, etc. So that's a huge difference. Um, conventions I know are different because a long time ago conventions for voice actors used to be, well, we can give you a plane ticket and a hotel room, but that's all we got for you. And now it's very different. Now we, can, now we sign autographs, we have our booths, we have a lot more panels, we have a lot more things going on. It's not just kind of, that's a very different scene. And there's so many more conventions, my gosh. There's like four or five of them a week used to be a couple of months a long time ago, or, you know, so they start out in a little high school gymnasium or the, the lobby of a movie theater, and now they're at the George Brown yeah, Convention Center. Oh yeah, at a club or something like that. So I love to see, the, I, I've loved seeing the growth of cons, because cons are really cool. Cons are fun for us to meet fans, they're how we uh, socialize with fans and meet them, they're how we even socialize with each other, because we never work with each other. Whenever we record, we're alone in a booth with a director, but we never get to hang out. We don't, ever, we don't go somewhere, like a bunch of voice actors don't go to a job every day and just to be voice actors all day. We, we, lunch. Never meet our we don't meet our coworkers except the cons. So I, there's a lot of people I've done tons of shows with that I've never met. I know this doesn't have anything to do with the anime convention, but this does have to do with my experience at the hotel. So there's a Brazilian steakhouse within this resort. So I figured, you know, yeah, I kind of want to go to some of these other panels. You know, I totally miss Black Nerd Rises. Shout out to them. I mean, they're they're killing it. 
And every time I see them at a convention, they, I mean, they fill the room. So shout out to them, but I did not get to make their panel because of this. So first of all, you know, I had to make reservations to go to this thing. Like I said, never been to one of these before. And I was even concerned like, oh, you know, am I, am I supposed to be dressed up? Am I too dressed down for this event? But then, you know, as I peeked my head over, what did I see? Hatsune Miku cosplayer. And that's when you know, when Miku is accepted, everyone is accepted. Yes, so it was like, all right, don't have to worry about that, I'm good to go. But yeah, I mean, the meat was absolutely delicious. Um, awesome food, awesome quality service. Uh, of course, you know, definitely pricier than all the other food. Uh, that I had at this convention, but you know, a really good experience. And ooh, that creme brulee, ooh, ooh, good stuff, good stuff all around. Had a good time. So I totally forgot to mention this. Like when you're walking to the game rooms, or you're com coming from the game rooms and you want to walk back to where the main events and stuff are, you're gonna bump into the food court. And the food court is pretty much like uh, I believe it had Mexican. It had a coffee shop. It had uh, ramen and it, they had pizza. Now, I don't know if I stepped into a time portal, but they had this massive pizza slice where, you know, you could eat one and be pretty good. Most people, it, it fills them up, right? Two dollars. If you went around the corner, you could get soda for free. Or if you wanted to have a bigger cup, you could pay a dollar and some change. And we're talking like... A three dollar meal like I haven't seen anything like that in since I was a kid like insanely cheap lunch like insanely cheap and good food good food even the ramen house pleasantly surprised by that my opinion was already changing and I was like wow like the food's good here and by the way there was also a, a diner delicious homemade food like I think I have a picture somewhere of my breakfast I'll show it but just you know, just good food, good portions, good portions, man. And just super affordable, very affordable food, unless, you know, you're going to the Brazilian steakhouse, but really, really just, I was pleased with that. Like if you're only staying here for two days, or if you're staying, let's just say you're staying for one day, right? If you're staying for one day, you have more than enough options. If you're staying here for two nights, okay, you still, in my opinion, you still have enough options. And I mean, if you really want to leave, you can, I will keep it real with you and say, yeah, it is a little isolated. So this was in Shawnee, right? And, uh, and even then it's mainly fast food options. So you're pretty much, you're better off just staying at the hotel. My homies that go to conventions on the regular, they know what I'm talking about when I say $15 chicken strips, you know what I'm talking about. $15 hot dogs, you guys know what it is. You know what these streets are like. It's desperate times. <laughs> Just by the way, shout out to Where to Waifu Wars. I'm actually rocking one of their shirts, and uh, I didn't get to make their panel either. You know, it's just one of those things where you're trying to pick and choose things to go. Some stuff, you know, I'm trying to do different things, new things. Like, you know, I went to two cosplay panels. You know, that's something different, and I'm just trying to check out different things to see what the vibes like. You know, that I mean, that's all the name of the game, really. But shout out to them. Cool shirt. I'm digging it. The next day I had planned to go to another John Gramillion Q&A. And unfortunately he wasn't there. He didn't show up. Um, but at the same time it was kind of cool because he had a solid panel with Amanda. So they were very just like just very reflective to us. Very honest and sincere. The last panel that I was able to check out was building a cosplay kit. Now this panel was actually uh, very interesting. Um, I guess you could say it's like if you're in a situation where you're traveling, you know, what are some emergency stuff that you could have on you that you could take with you to a convention or whatever, or you could take with you on a plane ride. And so very insightful. And we even got some gifts. I mean, that's what's up, man. That shout out to her. That she that was really cool of her. There was a panel I was disappointed was canceled. And that was, where does Anime Oklahoma go from here? I was wanting to hear more of the feedback from con goers, as well as how was the overall turnout for this year? I mean, at the Reed Center, it was pretty obvious two years ago that that one Friday, it was slow. That had me worried. 
And then last year, the show took it up a notch and like just had a solid showing. In this casino, that was a little harder to gauge. Sometimes the casino people would bleed into convention goers. So kind of as I stated at the beginning of this video, I was very leery on how all of this was going to turn out. I was very concerned and I was like, I don't think this is a good look. I walked into a, a side area, which was not the main entrance, and uh, I didn't see anybody in costume. I did not see Miku anywhere. <laughs> So like I was just like, oh dude, I don't I don't know if this was a good look. You know, maybe they lost uh some of the audience due to it being in a casino. But I have totally flipped all the way around. Like just like come on, man, like plenty of food options. The staff in the casino was very helpful and friendly. Javier told me a little bit of the details behind how it ended up being at this location. And I appreciate him sharing that with me, but it worked. So, I mean, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I have to say, Javier, you did your thing. Um, this was a fun substitute. And like I said, if you had to go back to this, I would not be hurt whatsoever. I don't really know what the turnout was for this year. Um, that's the part that I wanted to go to that panel that was canceled because I wanted to know like, okay, we did pretty good this year or we lost some of our audience because uh, we're at this place that's a little isolated and it's a casino. I really wanted to know that information, but um, but hopefully it turned out well and it was a success. Um, like I said, there were some panels I could clearly see. Okay, yeah, there's a lot of people here. Cool, 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 nice. But I never do like any of the VIP stuff for this convention, so I have no idea if when that stuff is going on, if there's a lot of people doing it or only a small number of people, I have no idea. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Please let me know where you stand down in the comments. Did you attend Anime Oklahoma? And even if you didn't, like, what do you think about a convention? It doesn't even have to be an anime convention. What do you think about a convention being at a casino? Like, that just sounds wild to me, but it worked. It totally worked. But as always, I appreciate you watching the video to the very end. And I'll see you next time.